Um, hello everybody, uh, my name is Vitaly Neymar. I am the Grand Master Resident for the next 30 days. Uh, I would like to thank the, the St. Louis Chess Club for hosting me, I'm very excited. Um, I guess last time I was a Grand Master Resident for three weeks, this time is a month, hopefully next time is going to be even more, but I guess they like me. So uh, I am very excited to, to come back um, and coach some chess. Um, and welcome, welcome to, to our strategy class. So today we're going to discuss some strategical nuances. Um, uh, so today the lesson is going to be about uh, unusual exchanges. Well, there are lots of unusual things uh, in chess uh, in general, but today we are going to discuss uh, about unusual exchanges, unusual moves uh, that we typically don't do in, in the chess games. Uh, and this is why it's so much difficult uh, for us to, to make in, in our games. Um, so this is all going to be our neck, our first position. This is from a game that was played between Grigorian and Kopraychik in uh, 1975. Uh, in this position, it is white to move. Uh, so white to move uh, uh, and make the best move. So I'm going to give you uh, the viewers uh, at home to, uh, uh, if you need to pause the video and think about this, uh, the next move that White has done. Um, but yeah, so uh, White to move, and uh, I'm also going to give a few minutes to our audience uh, in the chess club to think about it. Bishop to F3. Okay, Bishop F3. Anybody has any other <coughs> suggestions? Queen F4. Okay, Queen F4, very good. Both are good moves. Moving forward, that's always a good, good sign. Uh, okay. Okay, well, it looks like Queen F4 and Bishop F3 are our candidate moves. Um, maybe we can obviously play some other moves like. Uh, h3 which 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 might help us in this position uh, so first of all what we do when we get a puzzle or a position we like to do an assessment of the position that's a that's a, a step that sometimes people forget to do so how do we how do we assess the position basically we need to figure out who is better in this position uh, number one what you would like to do is to count the material balance so as you can see in this position uh, both sides of two bishops uh, we have two rooks, a queen, and each side has six pawns. So, materials, materially speaking, uh, we have e equal position. Then, we have to look at some of the positional nuances. For example, <coughs> we look at king safety. In this moment, both of the kings are pretty safe because, well, we know that uh, the kings in behind those uh, three pawns over here uh, this, this king is also pretty safe, he's not exposed anywhere. Um, then what, uh, what we would like to see is to compare is the pawn structure. As you can see from this position, uh, white uh, has what we call three islands, uh, three pawn chains. Black has only two pawn chains. The less pawn chains we have, the better for us. Okay. Now, why is that? Because the the, the last pawn, we start the chess game with just one pawn chain, uh, perfect pawn chain going from a7 till h7. We have this nice, uh, nice uh, eight pawns defending each other. Now, the more and more pawn chains we get, for example, if you look at White's position, um, those those <coughs> pawns, the a3 pawn is technically is an isolated pawn which means that uh, he has no friends next to him, you know, those, those, those guys who are going to back him up. Um, so, um, you know, that, that makes the, the pawns are much weaker. So in this case, uh, uh, white is going to be the one, I'm sorry, black is going to be the one with the better pawn chain because he has only two uh, versus three pawn chains. So this, that's the pawn chains. But then we can go each piece by piece and compare the pieces. Now, for example, <coughs> we can start with the bishops. White bishops versus uh, black bishops. Now, obviously, 
Uh, white bishop, this bishop on h4 is kind of attacking this pawn, so he is doing something. The bishop on e2, not doing much. And right now he's just covering the, the rook on e2. On the other hand, black has this nice uh, fanchetto bishop on g7, uh, which attacks the uh, backwards uh, d4 pawn. Uh, so that's that he's doing a pretty good job. This bishop on, on d5 um, is also beautiful, beautifully placed. Um, he is blocking, uh, blockading the, the, the pawn on d4. Uh, he is also attacking g2. And sometimes it's also useful to defend your own pawns. If you can see from this position, this bishop on d5 is very difficult to move as well. It's very difficult for white to, uh, to make any progress. Um, basically, those pawns that he has on c5 and d4, those are fixed pawns. Um, those pawns are very difficult to move because they're blockaded. Usually, the best blockading piece is the knight. But yes, but we don't have the knights here, so at least we got, we got the, our bishop over there. So. Just for the moment, let's assume that black's, uh, that black's bishops are better. If we can see the queens, probably white's queen is going to be look look uh, going to look for us a bit better uh, because maybe it's positioned slightly uh, on the second rank instead of the uh, last rank of the, uh, the uh, comparing to the black queen. However, um, you know white's queen is not attacking anybody and she's just defending now. Black screen, black screen, on the other hand, she has some potential uh, threat uh, over the d-file attacking the, the pawn on d4. Again, so the problem is this pawn on d4 again. Um, now, rooks, though, definitely white is better. Right? So, white is better, black's, black's rooks are, this guy is defending, is you know, blocked, this guy is blocked. And our rooks, although they are also blocked at the moment, but this is just temporary uh, because we know, and you know, they're in the center. So this is kind of uh, the idea. Okay, so we kind of made the assessment, and I think what we got from this position is that it's pretty much pretty much balanced. We have our whiteness weaknesses all with the pawn chain, but he has a little bit more space. Uh, his rooks are a bit better. Black's bishop. So it's kind of a fight. It's a very interesting fight. Uh, the next few moves will probably decide who will get the, uh, the advantage, who will get the upper hand. Um, so the, the two moves that were considered by the audience here at the chess club were queen f4 and bishop f3. So let's, let's start with this move, queen f4. Queen f4 is a very good move. Um, it, moves, it moves the queen forward. Uh, it attacks f7, although it's still defended, but, uh, and it also you know, defends the bishop on, on h4, reinforces it, uh, and obviously opens up uh, the rook. The problem with queen f4 is probably it's, the, it's nothing concrete. So, for example, if you would be black, how would you, how would you respond here with, with, with black? What would be the plan here for black? Yes, please. Uh, f6 with the idea of uh, g5. Okay. Interesting idea. So to pl to push to p to play f6 with the idea of g5. Hmm. Interesting. Um, what do you guys think about the, this plan? Is it good? Not so good. It's a little risky for king safety. Right. The problem is is first of all I don't like it because uh, it exposes this diagonal. Again, not at this moment. It might not be. Uh, not that not, not uh, might not be weak at the moment, but it might become uh, if we exchange the bishops at some point. But the uh, the most uh, the most uh, thing that bothers me is that f6 really uh, blocks our bishop on g7, and uh, probably white is going to see that and maybe move his bishop to g3, and uh, we will have to figure out how to. Obviously, we can push f5 then. But again, this diagonal might be exposed. So good idea, but uh, maybe not, not, not necessarily what we need to do at the moment. 
Wow, very good, very good explanation actually. So, uh, you know guys, uh, in a, there's a thought process in chess, uh, so once we assess the position, we're trying to come up with those candidate moves. We found them, so how did we find them? So, one of the steps in, in chess is to uh, ask yourself the question, how, what is my worst piece and how can I improve this? So, I can either try to improve one of my pieces, although really, I don't see a way, so, th so th there is this, there's this move bishop f3, I can improve the bishop and the rook, or there's an, there is another question I can ask myself, what is my opponent's best piece and how can I exchange it? So it's all very relative and I like the fact that uh, you guys all agree that the d5 bishop is very annoying. So however against queen f4, so let's see, let's see how can I, how can I maybe I can play uh, okay, what is the worst piece for black? Probably this rook on a8. And uh, we know that the rook will probably go to d8 in order to help the attack on the d4 pawn. So, um, I would say probably maybe queen d7 will be, will be an interesting move. For, uh, for black. And then if bishop f3, well, I'm kind of debating between immediately playing rook d8 uh, or maybe I have to play something like e6 not, so not to, not to uh, weaken, not to lose my e7 pawn. So one of, one of those uh, moves. Now if he takes, um, he can probably take with the queen and although this bishop is kind of annoying but I succeeded in stopping the blockade. So that's a good idea, <coughs> but Surprisingly, the correct move is actually uh, bishop to f3. I'm going to give it double exclaim. Very, very unnatural move for, for us to make bishop f3. <coughs> okay, let's look at black's options. I mean, what, what can, what can uh, black do? Um, again, if I try to play queen d7, um, then uh, black can probably take on d5 and uh, we lose the pawn here on e7. So for example, this, um, I'll take, take, a bishop takes on e7. Right. So, so one of those. I would probably prefer to play to take it with the bishop um, but with the rook it also seems, seems pretty good okay so bishop to f3 so we are all in the, in the agreement that uh, black uh, needs to take on f3 so this is how uh, the game went bishop f3 and pawn takes on uh, f3 okay so yeah I mean we'll learn from you know when, since we are kids that we should not uh, expose a king, uh, but in this in this uh, in this situation, first of all, uh, black doesn't have any pieces near the white's king, um, so he he is still defended. Um, yes, we again we destroyed our pawn structure, but really the 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 idea is <coughs> is reviving our our pawns. Um, the d4 pawn and the, the c5 pawn. Okay, so who wants to offer the best move for uh, for black? Try to think about it as black. So I'm gonna uh, flip the board. Sorry? Queen d5 is an option, yes. Okay, anybody else? Queen C7. <laughs> yeah, Queen C7, C7 is also an option. That's that's correct. So all those all those queen moves. Uh, we favor all those queen moves. And that's that's very natural because we want to take out our queen out of this pin. This is one of our un most annoying pins uh, that we have in this position. So in the game, uh, black chose this move queen to d5. Satellizing the queen, um, attacking f3 pawn, um, 
Yeah, so basically we, we white has a weakness now on F3 and D4, and it's very natural for us to, to come there and, and take the pawn. Now, uh, Queen C7 though, will probably not be the best chance for black. Um, because white has um, this, this move here. Uh, well, first of all, what's our goal as well? We want to push d5, right? We want to mobilize those pawns. But if I play d5 immediately, black would just capture on c5. So that's not so good. So the best move for white here would be Yeah, very good. Queen to e3. Again, um, looking at, the, at defending the pawn on c5, but also attacking the e7 pawn. Now it looks like black can just play e6. But that's not so good, right? D5. D5, excellent. Bam. Always move forward, charge. <laughs> D5, and obviously taking on D5 would probably be very dangerous. Even though if queen takes uh, twice, and right here, bishop f6, bishop e7 maybe immediately. Rook takes D5 also looks pretty good, and rook D8, lots and lots of options. Okay, so black continues correctly. Queen to d5, attacking our uh, pawn on f3. Uh, and in this case, well, white doesn't really have time to, to defend that pawn. Because if we play here again queen f4, well, black is going to play e6. And what have we done? This doesn't make any sense. So he took on e3. Uh, I'm sorry, on e7 with a bishop. Queen takes f3. Okay. Well, the problem for white now is that um, his position is quite dangerous. The, the king got exposed. So let's think together. What would be the best move here for white? How would we proceed cautiously? Queen e3? Rook e3. Okay, so we have queen e3, rook e3. Okay, well, let's look at those options. So, rook e3 first. Obviously, we are scared about queen g4. Check. And what do we do now? Now, if rook to g3, which looks the most logical move in the position, this would probably be bad. Because once we move our rook away, what is changing the position? The bishop is no longer defended. So any move, any move in chess has its advantages and disadvantages. I always tell it to all of my students. Every move, um, even if you blunder a queen, still has some advantage. Okay. Um, so how can we use this? What would be the, uh, the response for black? Yeah, right? So when we, usually when we get a puzzle, we need to look at three things first. Uh, we call them action moves, or, or some people call them act, active moves. Number one are checks, number two captures, number three threats. So obviously our candidate moves, we can take other of the rooks with the queen, but in this case, we, we, actually we can take on d1 and then take on e7 or take here, but usually the bishop and the pawn are worth less than a queen. So queen to, takes on d4, that's a capture. Yes, and if it takes us, well, we take, 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 and we're, we're going to hope for a draw here with white, obviously, for pawn down. So the rook to g3 doesn't work. Um, king to h1? I see here two ideas for black. Perfect. 
So again, what is changing the position? The, the rook is lined up with the queen, so we can either try to play bishop h6 and get the material, or we can play, even I even thought about the rook takes e7, takes maybe some, maybe some perpetual check or hunt the king down. Not sure what's the evaluation here exactly, but looks pretty dangerous. So unfortunately, rook to e3 does not work. Queen e3, probably same things might happen. Um, I would assume that... Hmm. Queen g4 check. Queen g3. This actually looks pretty good for white. If he if he's able, if white is able to exchange the queens, this is definitely going to be a favorable endgame because I have no idea how black is going to stop me from pushing my pawn. So probably in this position, black needs to go back to d5 and just to blockade the pawn, just to make sure that we blockade the pawn. And I'm not sure that white has a way here to uh, make progress because um, we're also pinned. We we'll also have to worry about the, our, our weak king. Um, no way for us to make progress. So, hopefully this gave a good hint on how we should play with white. So again, we have two problems here in this position. Uh, number one is the king. And number two is the d5 square. Bingo. Very good. Good job. Okay. So basically we need to defend those two squares. Queen to g5. This is an interesting position because um, those grandmasters who played in the game Black made a move now that actually lost him the game. So I'm going to sh flip the board here. And the position is not, not so simple actually for black uh, because uh, the problem is that the d d5 pawn is very difficult to stop. Uh, d5, d6, d7. Um, very, very, very difficult to stop this pawn. So black needs to make some decisions. Um, so think about this at home and, and here at the chess club. How would you continue here with black? A to D8? Wow, that's... C8, okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> like, am I missing something? Yeah. Yeah. Positional sacrifice, huh? <laughs> no, but, okay, rook C8 is one of them. H6, yeah. Nobody wants to take a pawn? No, nobody, nobody here is a pawn grabber? <laughs> yeah, it was Yasser. <laughs> Let's discuss those two options that you guys just gave. Rook c8 and h6, h6 both of them are very good. Uh, because rook c, I like that rook a c8, you're, you're, involving your game in, you're involving your rook into the game. But actually, if you think about it, the rook on c8 is not going to do much. I still will be able to play uh, maybe d5 or, or d6, uh, moves like that. Um, although, although too, technically, there is a nice, um, there is a nice uh, tactic here. So rook c8, and if you play, if white plays d5, black has an interesting idea here, taking on e7. Always look at those captures. <coughs> White can't take with a, with a rook, obviously, because queen takes on d1. And if he takes with the queen, then queen g4, and it's probably at least a draw. Um, I mean, the ki king escaping to e2 is, just looks too dangerous. So d5 doesn't work, but here's the, here's the interesting part. The other move that you guys suggested is h6. And I like both of those moves because those moves are trying to move the queen away from g5 
and because remember our, our goal was uh, with the queen to defend g4 and to defend d5 the problem is is that the queen can move to g2 that's correct yes and if we obviously if we again if we exchange queens um, in this position black is almost helpless well he is a helpless so <laughs> Um, we, c we just cannot prevent d5, d6, d7 too much for us. So on rook c8, it would, it would be the same move. Rook c8, queen g2. And then if you don't exchange queens, I can either play d5 or I can take on b7. So it is not rook c8 and not um, h6. Now, in the game, the grandmaster actually took the pawn on a3. Bam. I gotta say, this is a very brave decision that was made by Black. But obviously, White continued with his plan now. D5. So D5 was played. Um, so how do we? No, how can Black stop the pawns? It's again almost impossible. In the game. Uh, Black played queen to a4, trying to bring his, his queen backwards. Uh, d6, queen d7. Okay, so looks like he blockaded our pawns, but the problem is, is that, that sometimes when you blockade uh, the opponent's pawns, it, it doesn't matter where, wh at which point uh, on the board you actually uh, stop them, because right now we just... It just looks like they are too much, too much uh, passed forward. Um, so why to move? What would you guys do here with white? How do we continue? It still looks like we um, don't have much to do here. Queen d5. Okay, what's the idea? Okay, so let's say if you play queen d5, I play rook a to c8. C six will be C six will be so C six after queen d five or now sure. after queen d five, um, but I can take take with the rook. C six will be good I if we somehow force black to take with the queen, but if I take with the pawn or with the rook, that's probably not going to work so well for us. Oh, is it, did the rook move to C eight or D eight? Oh, I said C eight. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought it was D eight. Oh, it's okay. Yeah, so the idea of rook c8 is, you know, I'm just trying to pick up on this, yeah, this, this backwards pawn on c5. Hmm. So how do we improve our position over here? Maybe we can try to find a weakness. Um, it's hard to say which piece is our worst piece in this position. It just looks like <laughs> everyone is in the right squares and the right spots. You can always go crazy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. H4. It looks like a, like an interesting idea. Um, I would say that. Uh, well, first of all, I would be a little bit concerned. Maybe he can just play H6 or H5 himself. Okay. You know what? I'm gonna use my advantage. I have a passer on A6. You use you use H pawn. I use A pawn. So let's see. So h5, h5 I'm going to play a4. <laughs> take. OK, I take with the h pawn. You better mate me in three moves. <laughs> you, better do it in, you better do it in three moves. The problem is, is that the, so okay, so which rook? So this guy, this this square is defended. Yeah. So I guess we need to try to do it with this rook. Yeah. Here. Ooh, and now, and rook a4. But even if I don't do rook a4, I can probably just put, play a2, right? And where is the queen gonna go? Good idea, good idea. In the game, White, uh, White played something very, s kind of similar. He used what we call the elevator. 
Uh, the elevator is when we move our rook up and we slide it to the side. It's like, you know, it puts it the floor in. So it only, so the qu question is which floor do we need to choose and which rook? Um, both of our rooks uh, seem pretty good, uh, to, to be honest, and you know, they're, pre they're pretty equal. Um, but where would you put the rook? I mean, probably not on the H file because again, the H pawn is not going to be attacked so much. Yes, F file. Because again, as you guys mentioned before, again, this F7 pawn might become the weakness. So, white played, rook to D3. So, rook D3 was played in the game. Um, A5 and rook F3. Now, the question is, let's say just black plays a4. What would happen then? Queen f4, yeah, maybe you can play queen f4, but then I can maybe play f5 and... Oh, rook, rook takes no yeah, yes. Always remember, the number one candidate moves. You always have to look for action moves first. Always action moves, checks, captures, and threats. No checks, so rook takes f7 is actually a threat because if king takes on f7, queen to d5, yeah, ne made next move. <laughs> so in this position, uh, black after white played the rook to f3, black realizes, uh oh, he's gonna mate me, so he played queen to c6. In this case, well, he's also attacking the rook. So white played rook e2, e3. This is a good, nice, nice idea, j defending the, the rook, but also just making sure that this pawn uh, won't keep rolling uh, down, down this uh, path. So rook e2, e3, a4. And now rook to d3. Again, what has changed in the position? Every move is an advantage and a disadvantage. So the queen moved from d7 to c6. So d7 became, uh, un, I guess, unblockaded. Mm. Uh, unblockaded, yeah. <laughs> um, well, black had to move because otherwise white plays d7 and white to, to move. Yeah, exactly. Rook takes a side. It's the same thing. Although we don't have a mate, but even if the, if, if the king takes, we can still check and check. That is it. <laughs> so rook takes f7, black did not take the rook, he played a3. Well, some hope. At, at least some, maybe just, just two, more, two more moves. That is correct, very good. Sharp eyes, queen d5. Nice. Probably not, not the main idea, the main idea is not to take a2 under control, but to uh, make some discovered uh, attacks. Actually, mate in one move, right? Uh, rook f8. That would be a nice move if, if a2. King, h8. Okay, white to move. The hardest part is to win a winning position. How many games did we, did we lose? <laughs> they slipped away, right? So, so close, there's two moves, two moves, like A2, A1. We gotta be careful. Have to make sure that we find the win. Queen A2, okay. So he blockades our pawns, you blockade, blockade his pawns. I think Queen A2 would probably be possible, but again, um, yeah, yeah, I want to look for, for those, I mean, look at our pieces hovering there next to the king. We're smelling some, I'm smelling some blood. Queen A2 probably has queen G4, maybe check, and queen, then queen D1 or queen E2, so some counter play for black. Yes, very good, correct. So we, first of all, I would look at the rook takes g7, but that doesn't work. And now we see that something is, something is wrong here. 
I mean, it, it, we usually don't want to put our queens uh, in front of the rooks, and in this in this case, that's what happened. So the the black queen is in front of the rook. Bishop to f6 was played. Uh, queen g4 check. But now we have this nice again. This rook lift uh, works as a shield to the king. So rook to g3. Uh, the queen went back to e6. But here white just took on g7 check. Uh, king went to g8. The only the only spot. And I'm gonna give you. Uh, the chance to find the last move in the game. Yes. Action moves comes first. Always look at checks first. This is our first candidate move. This is the only check. Rook f8 check because and the black assigned because if I take obviously if I take with the rook, queen takes e6 check, and if I take on g7, I can probably just take the queen again. And now rook takes a8. Okay. So in this position, white won the game. Now we did we're not finished yet. Not finished. Well, let's figure out. So as we said, black made this huge mistake in this game. He gr he grabbed he, he he became greedy. Took on a3. So we also looked at rook c8. And we looked at h6. So those pawns, uh, those moves will not help us. So what will save us? There are two interesting moves in this position, and let's see, let's see who tries to to find this. So one of the moves is is, pre is pretty similar to f6. Um, so the other move is, is f5. So there are two options here. Uh, so the number one candidate moves, obviously we're gonna look for those checks again, but we cannot find anything. But the other way is actually to take on e7. So this is a pretty interesting idea as well. So take, again, he cannot take with a with the, with the rook because uh, the queen is gonna take on d1. And if the queen takes on uh, e7, then queen to g4. So this is one of those positions well, we, well, we are using this uh, the symbol, uh, the unclear one. So if you go here, we have this unclear. It's kind of like a um, laying eight. It's unclear. King f1 and uh, queen h3 check. King e2, and uh, maybe even I, even then I can probably take on a3. So this is quite quite unclear. The other way for black to play. Is to play f5. Okay, so f5. Again, the, the, the actually the main idea of this move f5 is to bring uh, the king to to f7. So queen f5 was played. Uh, it was not played, but uh, this was what was supposed to happen. Um, now, uh, so what's the idea? So the idea is that uh, white again cannot play d5 because I can take on e7 now. Um, so white's best chances here is to play queen e3. Again, uh, we need to try to exchange the queen somehow. So queen e3. Um, queen to d5. We want to make sure that we keep the queens on the board if we are playing as black. Queen d5, uh, queen f4, and now the key move is king to f7. That, that is pretty unusual. Not an unusual exchange, but uh, very unusual to bring in the, the king into the action so, so early in the game. Um, so king f7, um, rook b1 can be played by, by white. So again, this, those variations are just speculations uh, to what could have happened uh, in the game. Um, and rook takes e7, rook takes e7, king takes e7, queen c7 check. King f8, 
rook takes b7, bishop takes d4, so there is no checkmate, but there is queen e7, king g8, queen h7, king f8, queen e7, king g8. Um, so there is no mate for white because luckily for, for, for black, he's defending both of those squares on g8, h8, and also g7, f7. Uh, but white has this very strong move here. Uh, rook to d7. Um, but again, it's not so little for, uh, for black because black can just move his, uh, his queen to c4. And um, technically, this position is supposed to end in a draw. Um, so that's pretty much it. So as you can see, um, and just to wrap up this, uh, this game, uh, as you can see, we started with this move. And here is where we had this unusual exchange, bishop to f3. Very, very unusual. But if you think about it, uh, really, white doesn't have any other option because if you give time for black, time works against white because if black uh, will would have activated his his rook and again put some pressure and he took out the uh, or he uh, would eliminate the spin, uh, this would be you know pretty devastating for white. It's going to be just much painful for you to play. Uh, so bishop f3, take take. Um, and then again, activating your queen, queen g5 was was a very good idea. So d5, d6. And again, unfortunately, black lost the game because um, he, he took this pawn on a3, but he could have had some chances after rook takes e7 or this move f5. Um, not sure what's, the, what's the, exactly the difference between f5 and, um, and f6, but... Uh, my opinion is that if we try to play f6, as you uh, somebody suggested here, the audience, um, it just maybe because again we are blocking this this bishop, and there uh, might be some consequences to to that. Um, so that's kind of um, point. Okay, guys, I hope you enjoyed uh, our lesson today and usual exchanges. Thank you so much for joining us, and keep watching our YouTube channel. Thank you. Mm -hmm.